Welcome back, Steelies. I'm Danny Steele. Let's get right into it. The band, no doubt, has a one in a million success story. The little known two tone ska band went from underground rebels to legendary performers. Many fans of the group are aware it was co founded by Eric Stefani, the older brother of Gwen Stefani. But did you know the humble beginnings of No Doubt would not have been possible without the man who gave the group its name, John Spence? John Spence was the original frontman and co founder for the group No Doubt. Through his high intensity stage performances and explosive vocal delivery, John helped the band grow a very large and very dedicated fan base in LA and the OC during the group's first year that helped pave the way for its future success. John Francis Spence was born February 3, 1969 in Anaheim, California. Growing up, he was known to his classmates as the quiet, energetic, and athletic kid with a big smile. He was someone that everyone loved. Those who knew John personally all have individual stories of sharing a laugh, music, or small adventure with him. In high school, John played track. The sport further bonded him with his fellow players, many of whom referred to him as Spence and he also struggled with his mental health, an ongoing problem he battled since his freshman year of high school, something few of his friends knew about. After John went missing from school for nearly a week, two of his teammates went in search for him to discover he had been admitted to the psych ward at the local hospital. John also had another friend who he confided in after his multiple stays in the mental health unit. They would watch TV and talk about what they wanted from their futures when they grew up. More than anything, John wanted to make a ska band, a passion of his that he shared with his Dairy Queen co-worker, Eric Stefani. One day at the Dairy Queen, John and Eric met and talked about getting a group together to play ska music. Eric played piano and persuaded his younger sister Gwen to sing background vocals. John was their lead singer. We thought we were really cool underground kids that found this weird music from England. John Spence, who was a guy that went to my high school, he hooked up with Eric because he knew he played piano. He's like, dude, you gotta start a band, start a ska band, you know? Eric, Gwen, and John considered the name Apple Corps, but eventually settled on No Doubt, John's favorite phrase. Tell me how you got the name No Doubt. Okay, uh, well, the band's been together for about five years, and about five years ago, um, the guy that used to sing with us doesn't anymore. He used to say this word. No doubt. Right, and so now that's the word we use. It's a really simple story, it's not really complex at all. The band went on to gather six additional musicians, no doubt incorporated rock, reggae, punk, and any other styles that suited them. In true punk style, John screamed out his lyrics more so than sang them. He often wore a trademark fuzzy hat that he fondly called his fuzzy furry, and the audience went crazy for John's trademark onstage backflips. John Spence at that time was uh, really the focal point of the band, and he was crazy. It was amazing. I was like, I'd love to be part of that. <laughs> He's just so into it, you know, it was his passion. That's what he, he knew that out of everything in his life that was going to make him happy, I guess. Ska music got its start in Jamaica in the late 1950s. It has a distinctive sound that uses guitar, bass, piano, drums, and horns, especially the trumpet, saxophone, and trombone. The rhythms of ska are designed for dancing and are what many people associate with the Caribbean flavor of music. Ska was enjoyed by many people and spread throughout the world. The band worked hard, writing music, practicing, and looking for places to perform. No one felt the pressure more than John. Their hard work paid off when the band received an invite to play at the Roxy, a famous club in Hollywood's Sunset Strip. The performance was an opportunity of a lifetime to get the band noticed by both new fans and most importantly, Hollywood executives that could help get their music heard on a larger scale. Leading up to the performance, John pushed the group to practice every day. As the December performance drew closer, all the band members were aware of what a big opportunity this would be for them. The strain may have been too much 
for an already quietly fragile John. Days before No Doubt's big performance at the Roxy, the unimaginable happened. On December 21st, 1987, shortly after 8 p.m., John Spence drove himself to a park in Anaheim. He wrote a two-page goodbye letter detailing his true anguish and the overwhelming pressure he felt for the band's success. In the letter, he explains, I think I felt too much pain and all I see in my future is more. He apologized to his loved ones and then he took his own life. John Spence was only 18 years old. We had a big show, we were opening for the Untouchables at the Roxy, and he um, committed suicide four days before that Christmas. When that happened, it was just such a shock. He was always the positive one. And none of us were prepared for that. None of us could see that coming. It just kind of happened. I wish there was something we could have done, something I could have done. Yeah, he was awesome. It was horrible, you know, and we were very young, and it was hard to understand it. It was very, like, we were all really, I think, angry about it and just confused by it. We all sat down and we all really discussed it and everybody decided, you know, John would have wanted us to keep going, you know, and he wouldn't want us to stop. The memory of John's legacy encouraged the band to persevere through their loss. No Doubt later wrote a song in his memory called Dear John. No Doubt's loyal longtime fans know of the importance John Spence had in the making of this global phenomenon. And now you do too. John had a big heart and a big smile. His loved ones will never forget this self-described rude boy with a heart of gold who made everyone laugh. We'll never forget you, John. Thank you for watching.